Hello everyone. This video will give you a brief outline of your fifth module digital modulation techniques. Uh, the presentation, uh, the PPT I am going to use is a PPT I used in class for showing some diagrams and equations alone. Don't use this as the only study material. Don't restrict your study only to this presentation. Use your textbook as well as the notes given by me uh, as a main study material. Uh, this is your uh, syllabus for your fifth module. Uh, let me give a brief introduction. A bandpass channel, it is a channel that passes only a specific band of frequencies. A lot of channels we encounter in nature, uh, in real world, are bandpass channels. For example, air is a channel that supports high frequency transmission. You cannot send a low frequency through air. So, uh, we need to modulate the incoming data using a high frequency carrier in order to uh, shift uh, the frequencies occupied that, by that signal into uh, a high frequency uh, band of frequencies. So what we do is uh, the incoming data here we we study digital modulation techniques so the information signal is digital in nature it is a symbol 1 or a symbol 0 or might be a combination of 1 and 0 depending on how many symbols you have. So uh, the incoming signal is digital in nature. We need to modulate this incoming signal using a carrier wave, a high frequency carrier wave. Usually it is a sinusoidal wave. So uh, the data presented is digital. <laughs> so this modulation uh, can key or switch the uh, three important parameters, uh, any of these parameters or maybe a combination of these. Uh, it will key or switch any of these parameters of the carrier, the, of the high frequency sinusoidal carrier uh, in accordance with the incoming data, whether it is a 1 or a 0. We have uh, three basic digital modulation techniques, uh, amplitude shift keying, frequency shift keying and phase shift keying. Now, uh, you, you might be uh, knowing about ASK, FSK and PSK. Uh, it is quite easy to understand what these stand for. According to a digital 1 or a digital 0, uh, ASK changes its amplitude, FSK changes its frequency and PSK changes its phase. We will be dealing with this uh, in somewhat detail in the uh, coming session. Uh, the choice of a modulation technique is based on the following six criteria. These are the main six criteria. It should have a maximum data rate. Okay, We always need a maximum data rate. Uh, there should be minimum probability of symbol error in order to have an efficient communication. The error should be minimum. Also a minimum transmitted power. Uh, we have, <coughs> we need to have um, you know, uh, devices uh, that will transmit power, uh, that will transmit the information using a minimum power, as power is a limited source. Again, this bandwidth is also a limited source. So, uh, we need to transmit signals that occupy minimum bandwidth in the channel. Channels are, all channels are band limited. So, we need to send a signal that occupies a minimum bandwidth. Maximum resistance to interfering signals and a minimum circuit complexity. Uh, we can clearly understand that uh, we cannot satisfy all these criteria at once. If we, if we need to increase certain things, we need to decrease certain things. For example, if we want to have minimum probability of symbol error, we need to have more power to transmit the signal. Uh, similarly, uh, if, we, if, we, if we want a maximum resistance to interfering signals, we need to have more power in transmitting the signal. So, uh, if you satisfy all these five criterion, of course, uh, we are not able to fully satisfy all these criterion. Uh, but, you know, if we want to satisfy, if we, if we find a trade-off between these criterion, uh, still uh, you will have a lot of circuit complexity in this. So uh, 
finding the right digital modulation technique is always a trade off between these criterions uh, coherent and non coherent detection in coherent detection exact replicas of the possible arriving signals are available at the receiver which means the receiver has exact knowledge of the carrier waves phase so uh, the receiver knows the phase of the incoming signal it can be a zero degree phase there is no phase change or it can be some other phase but uh, the receiver knows exactly what is the phase of the incoming signal that is coherent detection so in our analysis we usually when we use coherent detection we usually take the phase as zero degrees uh, in non coherent detection the receiver doesn't know at which phase the incoming signal is uh, coming uh, the incoming signal might be having some phase change which the receiver is not able to decode or understand but uh, in non coherent detection we use certain techniques uh, like the quadrature receiver we learned in our previous module uh, we use uh, receivers like that and uh, try to decode what is the uh, incoming signal so non coherent detection uh, need not uh, know what is the phase of the incoming carrier however uh, it has an inferior performance over the coherent detection i had given uh, ask the analysis of ask as a self study topic because it is fairly simple uh in the class we dealt about uh, psk and fsk in detail what we did was the probability of error analysis and also we tried to plot the signal space diagram or the constellation diagram for uh, that particular modulation we tried to design uh, the transmitter and receiver for all these different types of modulation and also Uh, we tried to draw the different waveforms connected with these modulations so now uh, let us uh, deal with this coherent binary fsk or coherent bfsk in coherent binary fsk the signals transmitted for symbols 1 and 0 they differ by frequency it is a binary fsk so the incoming symbol is either a 1 or a 0 so Uh, s i of t it is expression for the transmitted signal of this uh, bfsk modulation technique i can take on values 1 and 2 so s 1 of t it will be root 2 eb by tb cos 2 pi f 1 t so uh, for a symbol 1 for a symbol 1 we have the value of i as 1 so s1 of t will be transmitted for symbol 1 and s1 of t will have a frequency f1 similarly for symbol 0 you have s2 of t where i takes the value 2 so s2 of t is equal to root 2 eb by tb cos 2 pi f 2t so for symbol 1 it is frequency f1 for symbol 0 it is frequency f2 and uh, always remember this Uh, takes a duration of 0 to tb so uh, incoming signal is in terms of uh, symbol 1 or a symbol 0 so it is always one bit one bit is the incoming signal so it takes on uh, the duration 0 to tb so tb is the bit duration and this transmitted frequency it equal it is equal to fi equal to nc plus i by tb Uh, which simply means that uh, both f1 and f2 they are multiples of a particular frequency and they should have uh, integer number of cycles in one bit duration the orthonormal basis functions used to represent s1 of t and s2 of t are phi i of t where i is 1 or 2 i can take on values 1 or 2 so in order to represent s1 of t and s2 of t we need two basis functions phi1 of t and phi2 of t 
they are given by phi 1 of t equal to root 2 by tv cos 2 pi f 1 t and phi 2 of t is root 2 by tv cos 2 pi f 2 t. So we can clearly see if you multiply root e b, if you multiply root e b into this basis function, you get the transmitted signal. And the transmitted signals varies in terms of their frequency f1 or f2. Uh, in order to find the coefficient of this basis function, uh, it is very easy to observe and find it is root eb or you can do this analysis. This is a general formula sij equal to integral 0 to tb si of t phi j of t dt. If you substitute si of t and phi j of t, you get this root eb when i equal to j and 0 when i not equal to j. Remember we have two basis functions phi 1 of t and phi 2 of t in BFSK. So uh, there should be two coefficients. So S1 which is the vector which is transmitted for symbol 1. It has two coefficients root eb and 0. So uh, I get this root eb because S1 vector inside the matrix it is S11 and S12. S11 in S11, i equal to j. So when i equal to j, you have root eb. And in S12, i is not equal to j. S12, i equal to 1 and j equal to 2. So we have 0 here. Similarly for S2, it is 0 and root eb. Uh, you can either do this simply by observing or you can substitute this formula and you can very easily get the values for S1 and S2. So S1 is a vector that is corresponding to the symbol 1. S2 is a vector that is corresponding to the symbol uh, 0. So here uh, what we observe is when a symbol 1 is coming as the input, we have coefficient for uh, the basis function phi 1 as root eb. In that case, the coefficient of basis function phi 2 is 0. And if the incoming signal is a symbol 0, we have the coefficient of first basis function phi 1 as 0. Second basis function, the coefficient is root eb. So for symbol 1, phi 1, which is having a frequency f1 is transmitted. For a symbol 0, there is only coefficient for phi 2. So the frequency f2 is being transmitted. The observation vectors are the vectors obtained at the receiver after correlating it with bank of correlators. Here in this case we have two basis function. So there are two correlators. So the two correlator outputs are named as x1 and x2 x1 is what a correlator does is it multiplies the incoming signal x of t with the corresponding basis function and it integrates over the time period so you get x1 similarly uh, the second basis function corresponds to the second correlator multiplies the incoming signal with second basis function integrate it over the time period tb uh, if a symbol 1 is transmitted then we can write x1 equal to s1 of t plus w of t where w of t is noise. Usually we assume noise as additive white Gaussian noise with zero mean and power spectral density n0 divided by 2. So here also we assume the same. Similarly if a symbol 0 is transmitted x2 can be written as s2 plus w of 